So um, good afternoon. My name is Carla Shamblin. I am the Director of Clinical Education for the PA program uh, for Creighton in Phoenix, Arizona. And this is um, our third, I believe, um, series of um, kind of preceptor development that could be for PA or for um, other disciplines if you're precepting other types of students. So uh, today's topic is on giving and receiving feedback. Um, kind of some goals that I'm hoping to do as far as um, our objectives today are to um, go over what it means to deliver effective feedback to students and also to review some uh, different methods. I think this is definitely something that takes uh, some practice. And so it's helpful to have some various strategies to try. Um, I also wanna discuss how collaborative feedback uh, between the student and preceptor can really help to foster interprofessional communication, which is something that's really big with Creighton as far as um, interprofessional education and interprofessional practice. Um, and essentially it helps to improve student performance. So um, I think we all probably know we work in higher education that adult learning is really enhanced if the students believe that they're making progress, if they're setting goals and they can see themselves um, reaching those goals or at least, you know, making efforts to achieve them. Um, so what we really want to talk about is effective feedback and effective feedback really is identifying you know, specific situations or specific skills and providing feedback that's either you know, uh, corrective or that is um, uh, kind of uh, reassuring what is done well, um, what things could be improved, but being very specific and explicit is really important when we talk about um, giving effective feedback. So this is kind of um, a diagram of, of really the learning cycle. Um, as you know, teachers or preceptors, we we want to plan our learning for students. Then we have them participate in the actual process. Uh, we do some form of assessment, um, and then we give an evaluation or you know, in this instance, feedback. And then the student is able to kind of take that feedback and implement some changes, and then start that whole process all over again. Um, it's really important, you know, students may only have one like formal time during their clinical rotation that they receive like an evaluation or formal formal feedback. Um, but it is important that we're giving this uh, to them on more frequent intervals and that can be done informally. So um, giving both positive and constructive feedback either daily or weekly is really recommended to address students' questions and encourage dialogue between the preceptor and the student. So I just want to kind of go through what that might look like um, in the clinical kind of realm. So as far as planning, um, one, one thing that you can do in terms of planning um, the types of encounters maybe your student's going to see is first looking at their rotation goals, right? Looking at obviously the syllabus and the, the learning objectives, but also what are your student's individual rotation goals? Because um, then you can kind of help to pinpoint or identify certain encounters or types of patients that, um, that they, uh, you can direct them to see. It's really important that we have goal setting, um, that we have, you know, specific and increased frequency of feedback um, to enhance this effectiveness of planning. Um, you can also, also use their evaluations to provide feedback and develop goals. So a lot of students, I know our program does a mid rotation evaluation and then an end of rotation evaluation. So you could use that mid evaluation as another way to kind of plan, okay, where are you at, you know, what things do we still need to have you achieve or demonstrate competence in, or that are things you feel that you're less comfortable with and wanna become more competent and kind of directing that as far as uh, developing your goals for, uh, for further in the rotation. So as far as learning, so for beginner students, you know, often they need more kind of oversight and preceptor support, guidance and coaching. Um, so you might select more encounters with similar ages or conditions to reinforce their learning. But then as they um, show some, you know, appropriate professional growth during the rotation, you might assign more complex patients uh, for them to see. And then again, as they become more competent, um, then really giving them more medically and social complex patients and maybe even with a designated time limit um, that they need to try to see that patient in. So they're gonna participate in that learning process. And then the next step would be assessing the, the student. Um, and I don't mean assessing them in terms of um, a formal written exam or anything like that, um, but assessing them in terms of uh, 
reviewing what they've done in that learning um, session, you know, either directly in the room with them, watching them, um, or maybe it's a presentation that they do to you um, after they've exited the, the patient encounter. Um, so you do want to consider what structure this is going to look like, how you're going to assess them, what exactly you're going to be assessing them on. And then schedule a time that works for you in your workflow, right? So if, if you're really wanting to give good, um, effective, specific feedback, you don't want to pick a time where maybe uh, you're double booked um, and don't have time to really listen to that, that student's oral presentation or to, to take time to go into the room and watch their physical exam skills. So find a time that works well with your workflow. And then make sure to prepare the student. Let them know that you're going to be um, assessing their skills or their knowledge and providing some feedback and kind of what to expect, you know, how that's going to occur. Is it going to be um, just a verbal communication? Is it going to be written feedback you're going to give them? Um, and then go ahead and directly observe them or, or do your, your assessment of them. A lot of delivering feedback, um, you know, is, is how you say things or your body language, your tone, your eye contact. Um, whether or not the student feels like you're you're rushing to give them the feedback and move on to the next patient. Um, so some kind of tips are to avoid delivering sensitive feedback um, in, and other information in front of patients or coworkers. Um, it's really best to pull them aside or take them into a private area to give them feedback that may be of more um, constructive nature. Um, Consider, you know, again, verbal versus nonverbal uh, cues that you may be giving if you're standing there with your arms crossed and, and you um, seem disappointed in them, that's going to come across to them. And then consider documenting the feedback. Um, so a lot of times we give students verbal feedback, and then I, I know as director of clinic ed, I hear all the time students saying, they never gave me any feedback. The preceptors never gave me any feedback. Um, when really the preceptor was giving them feedback on a daily basis, it was verbal, and the students often didn't pick up that that's what was going on. Um, so sometimes documenting the feedback can be helpful for the student to really see, um, you know, in a nice explicit way that's written what you're saying to them or areas they need to improve upon or what things they're doing well. And it can be helpful for programs too to, to receive that or if they're having a student that's maybe having difficulty on rotation to see what kinds of things you've been working with them on and what kind of feedback you've given them. One of the things that um, that we don't want to do is just praise students, right? It's very easy to just say, oh, you did a great job. Um, but really, that's so general, and it's not something that the student can take anything away from. It makes them feel good. They like it. They tend to actually go to um, you know, faculty or preceptors that are more willing to just give them this praise rather than going to somebody who's going to be more critical of them and actually give them some constructive feedback that could be helpful. Um, but this is, you know, this is this is great as far as you know trying to keep a positive learning environment, um, but it's not the most effective way to provide feedback. So by effective, I mean reinforcing um, or correcting certain behaviors or you know skills or addressing knowledge deficits. Um, so something that's very specific, um, making sure that you're being non-judgmental, you're trying to develop this trusting relationship with the student where they feel comfortable coming to you and asking. Uh, for your feedback. Um, and also it's helpful sometimes to compare their performance to a standard. So um, whether that's to a, a medical standard, um, you know, best practices, uh, standard of care, or if it's to maybe the standard of another learner that is at the same um, kind of place in their learning as the student um, and, and kind of helping them to see kind of where they are and where they need to be. So that's what I mean by some of the things that we want to give that would help to make it more effective feedback. Um, again, it can be reinforcing, it can be corrective, um, but usually when it's in this kind of context of, um, of more of a, a trusting relationship with the provider or the preceptor where it's non-judgmental, the student's going to be more apt to take that feedback and to feel uh, like they can then apply it. So I wanna go through um, a few examples. There's there's three I wanna talk about. The sandwich um, model, which many of you have probably um, seen or, or used, ask till ask, and then the one minute preceptor. Um, I really like the sandwich model for the fact that it's very um, simple and easy to remember. 
Um, so you give some kind of positive feedback to the student, and then you layer that with some constructive feedback, and then again, end it with positive feedback. Um, so it's really easy to kind of pick at least two things they did well that you can give positive feedback on, and then at least one item that you can give constructive feedback on. Um, I'd say one of the pitfalls though with this particular model is that sometimes it's easier for students to remember the positive because that's what the preceptor led with and that's what they concluded their conversation with. Um, so this might be better for maybe a beginner student um, or a little bit earlier on in their in their clinical learning. So again, very easy to remember, pretty easy to pull out one or two kind of key things or salient points that you want to address with the, the student, um, but probably not as effective as some of the other ones we're going to talk about. So the ask, tell, ask method, um, it seems, the slide already seems a little busy, but really you're kind of just asking the student, what do you think went well? And allowing them a time to kind of respond and reflect on what they think they, they did well. Um, and then saying, this is what I thought about it. This is what I thought you did very well. And being very explicit about something that they did. And then asking them, what do you think could be improved on? And again, allowing them some time to self-reflect, to, um, to self-assess, um, and then you can counter with what you think maybe could be improved. And this is a very um, bi-directional type of feedback. Um, I'm gonna provide some actual specific examples here. Um, so say that you're um, meeting with a student and you just had them do a, a patient encounter and now you're asking them, okay, what parts of your assessment of the patient uh, went well? And the student responds, well, I think my problem-focused history taking seems complete. I only took about five minutes to do it. And this is where you would counter with what you thought went well with the encounter. So I agree, I thought your history taking was thorough and efficient. Um, you clarified important information that the patient shared during the pertinent review of systems. So then you ask, what do you think could be improved? The student might say, well, my approach to the physical exam felt disjointed and it took longer than I thought necessary. And now you can counter with, again, what you think could be improved upon and, and actually relate it back to what the student um, provided to you. So yes, while you included essential elements of the physical exam, it wasn't systematic. Um, the patient had to be repositioned several times. So a strategic way to avoid this in the future is to develop a plan for the physical exam kind of before you initiate the exam. So it's kind of this back and forth, um, but again, it really allows the student to kind of self-reflect and assess what they think they did well, what they think could be improved upon. And then it, it allows the, the door to be open for you to express what you thought uh, went well and what could be improved upon. There's just another quick example here. So um, if you're asking them about you know, diagnosis and treatment, what elements of the diagnosis and treatment planning went well, and the student says, well, I'm confident in the most likely diagnosis and the first line therapy I think was you know, appropriate for this patient. So yeah, I think you came to the correct conclusion about the diagnosis in addition to knowing which medications first line they'll remember to specify dose, route, frequency, and any patient education that's indicated. So that's where you're kind of, again, you're providing that positive praise. Yes, I think you have the right diagnosis. You came up with the first line medication but then there's some other components that I want you to work on in the future. So what do you think could be improved for this particular um, student? Um, well, I only have three disorders on my differential. Okay, I agree. It's important to have a broader differential. I would encourage you more uh, to read more about the most likely diagnosis and related conditions tonight. And then tomorrow we can discuss the clinical reasoning behind the diagnosis. So this really kind of um, sets the stage for promoting self-directed learning. It allows the student to go home that night, read or study, um, kind of um, come back to you and clarify then any questions or reasoning that are that are unclear the following day. Um, but it kind of, again, takes away that burden that often preceptors feel about having to teach in the moment um, and to take a lot of time to teach right after a patient encounter. You can put it back on the student to do some um, self-directed learning and then be their, their guide and their mentor when they're having uh, questions that come up, come from that or arise from that, or they're having difficulty in um, their clinical reasoning for certain diagnoses. So the strengths again of um, this model, the ask, tell, ask is that it's very learner centered, right? You're asking for them to um, 
to have some uh, reflection and, and self-assessment. Um, so it helps to foster that skill of thinking about, you know, yourself and, and where could I improve? Where are my weaknesses? What are my strengths? Um, it increases their accountability for learning again, by kind of reflecting them back to, okay, here's what I want you to do moving forward. Um, go home and read about these things. Um, come back tomorrow and we'll find another encounter that's similar and have you do it again or address any questions you have. Um, it tells you as the preceptor, it gives you some insight into the student's perception of their own performance, which sometimes, um, you know, they can maybe be lacking in that. So that gives you that opportunity to see kind of where do they think their their strengths are, or their weaknesses are. And then it really encourages um, specific feedback and it can be used across a lot of different settings, um, which is really nice as well. The last um, type of kind of feedback method that I'm gonna review is the one minute preceptor, which I think is a very uh, popular and common one. Again, it's very um, fairly simple, easy to remember, quick to utilize. Um, essentially what you're trying to do is, you know, ask the student, what do you think is going on? So getting a commitment from the student on the patient encounter, um, having them, you know, provide some supporting evidence that helps to, uh, you to see what their clinical reasoning is like. Um, and then uh, providing either some, you know, positive or constructive feedback, reinforcing what went well, correcting any errors. And then it gives you that opportunity to teach kind of a, a clinical pearl or general rule that's a, you know maybe associated with that diagnosis or that type of patient encounter. Um, so again, very um, quick, easy to use. I've got little cards for the one minute preceptor that are laminated that'll fit in your pocket that I'm um, happy to share with you if you'd like one stop by our, our campus and pick one up. Um, but I send those out to my preceptors and I think this is a very well known and, and again, um, useful as far as being very explicit in the feedback that you're giving um, as far as the type of, of feedback. So um, these last two methods, the ask, tell, ask, and the one minute preceptor, I think are um, really helpful in terms of trying to reframe the feedback process. We're so used to it being kind of this dump where the preceptor tells the student, you know, what they thought they could improve upon, what they did well, what they did wrong. Um, but now we're really trying to reverse that script a little bit and make it more of a bi-directional rather than unidirectional process. Um, I know for our, you know, for PA programs, there is specific accreditation requirements. And this is actually one that I pulled that's related to uh, preceptors and clinical rotations and, and giving um, timely and ongoing feedback. Um, it's something that our our accrediting body and our program expects preceptors to do is to give regular, you know, timely feedback to students on their clinical performance, their knowledge, their critical thinking skills based on the level of the learner and within that particular type of rotation or the course instructional objectives. Um, but really, rather than it just being the preceptor telling the student all of this, we want to start seeing the students reflect on their own performance and their own clinical knowledge base and to give some input regarding their performance. And then even suggestions for how the preceptor may be able to help them um, by improving certain things that they do as a preceptor to help reinforce learning. So we want students to participate in the self-reflection process. So one way to do that would be to ask them just directly, what do you, you know, what did you learn today? And let them um, kind of share with you some things and then say, this is where you're trying to now get them to provide you some feedback is what can I do better to help your education? You know, what kinds of things can I do um, that you can tell me about now real time in the moment that I could make actionable while you're still here with me as a student to improve your learning or enhance your learning. And, and that's what I mean by bi-directional. You're asking them for feedback as well. You're not just delivering feedback. This has been um, a process that is known to help um, students feel like they're actively participating in their learning on rotations. Um, and it, it makes them feel like um, they're able to uh, do things that maybe are, or provide some suggestions that are maybe specific to their type of learning, the way that they learn. Um, which can be very individual. Um, so again, this is something that we've seen foster interprofessional collaborative practice 
um, because instead of it just being that one way you're telling the student what they did uh, well or what they need to improve on, uh, you're getting some additional feedback from them on your abilities as a preceptor, um, and it establishes that partnership. Um, also, it's seen to kind of help with um, um, that hierarchy that we see, right, that um, you're the preceptor, they're the student. And so by having this type of bi-directional feedback and conversation, um, they've seen it actually improve the way students um, have in a professional communication when they become a clinician, so when they graduate. So some benefits, it helps to establish this partnership. It informs the preceptor real time, right? It, it allows for some actionable changes to be made, either um, either on that rotation with that student, or maybe it's you know within the next few weeks when you have an, another student starting with you. Um, but that's a lot better than having to wait until the end of the rotation when a student fills out an evaluation and the program contacts you about um, your evaluation scores or or comments. Um, this is going to give you more actual real-time um, feedback that you can utilize on the rotation. And it also gives that role modeling where you're inviting feedback um, from the student in this nice, you know, graceful manner. You're showing vulnerability. And um, that helps, again, with that power differential and that, that builds their professional skills in terms of communicating with other, um, other professionals. Um, this may sound like it's a little bit difficult to do. Um, and so, you know, some ways to think about it would be maybe just asking the student, you know, I when I was a student, I remember struggling with how to give feedback to one of my preceptors. And I wish they had said something like, you know, I find it difficult to tell you that I don't know something. Um, it might help if you checked in about my confidence level before we discuss my management plan, you know, and then say kind of what similar things would you like me to say? Um, and that kind of helps to open up that discourse and and let them know that they were once a, you were once a student too. Um, and yeah, it's hard to ask for feedback or it's hard to give your preceptor feedback on their preceptor skills. Um, but this is one way to kind of start that conversation. So this is um, just an example. It's an excerpt out of our evaluation of the preceptor for the, the Phoenix program. It's not all inclusive. I just pulled out some of the key um, ones uh, on the evaluation that are about the preceptor. Um, but we ex we certainly ask our students to tell us, you know, did the preceptor provide constructive feedback um, that was fairly regular? Um, you know, was it ongoing? Was it at, at least at the midpoint of the rotation that helped to identify your strengths and weaknesses? Um, because this is something that we really um, want to see our preceptors doing. And again, this is done at the end of the rotation. So um, it's, again, kind of that point of, if you're able to have those conversations and bi-directional feedback with the students on rotation, um, you'll be able to acknowledge maybe some areas where you could improve upon before seeing this end of rotation evaluation from the program. So just um, a couple of things to keep in mind, um, behaviors that would indicate a student is getting it, they're you know, able to connect with patients interpersonally, they're, they seem organized and independent and time efficient, they seem self-confident, but know their limits. Um, they're doing a holistic view of care, right? They're addressing not only the, the medical uh, concerns the patient's coming in with, but also addressing health promotion, disease prevention, um, and that they're able to you know, provide good decision-making and documentation that's thorough and accurate. Um, some red flags um, or red flag behaviors would be if students are really you know, hesitant or defensive, especially when delivering feedback to them. Um, if they're uneasy with uh, rapport with patients or they're missing cues, um, they don't seem to have an explanation or they can't critically think through their, their rationale for certain diagnoses or differentials. Um, they can't prioritize patient problems. They're not sure what tests to order, or the plan of care, or how to create that themselves. Um, their physical exam is poor and consistent. Um, so again, these are really important things that um, both the student and the clinical uh, faculty and staff need to be aware of. Um, so certainly we don't want you to wait until the end of the rotation to provide feedback to the student on their evaluation or, or to the student directly on some of these issues. So if you're seeing any of these red flag, 
behaviors, please reach out to us. Um, document on their mid-rotation evaluation. Again, if there are things that you have already addressed with them and provided feedback throughout the rotation and documented, um, supply that as supporting you know, evidence or comments to the program. Um, our last session for the preceptor development series is going to be by Patty Schulting, who is um, with the PA program in Omaha. And she's gonna be going over evaluation of students in more detail. Um, but I thought it was nice that these might be some things to, again, be looking out for um, as far as, you know, behaviors that they're they're getting it. These are would be things I would be giving constructive or not constructive, but positive reinforcing feedback about. And then um, some of these things would be ones you're trying to address and give more explicit feedback about the student and trying to develop these skills. Um, and then if you have concerns, um, letting the student know, letting the program know. So that is all that I have for today. Um, this is the continuing education credit information if you're seeking the, the CME that goes along with the session. Um, I just wanna see if there's any questions anyone has in the chat. Um, are the slides available? I do believe, Jessica, can you answer that? Will you be posting this? Yes, we do a follow-up email and I will make sure um, that faculty receive this. We usually send it to Creighton faculty. So if you're on that listserv, you would be able to get that. If you're thinking you might not be, just shoot your email in the chat to me and I'll make sure that you get it. But we'll do the slides and the recording. All right, thank you. There's 